love to do. I don't know. A marathon is no joke. Is not, I don't know that I could do it again. 26 point what? Two. Two. <laughs> right. 26 don't point anything. Mm. I'm glad that they said 14 hours for right. some drink I mean, in hand. And Jen, you would know this. These people train for men. And, the couch and yeah. Do that. Mm -mm. So yeah. there was record temperatures yesterday. It was 75 degrees, oh. record high, which is not good. It actually cuts no. off your time when it's that warm. Yeah. And and what is it, Jen? Like, you like 55 cool? yes. degrees, Jen? Yes, yeah, like 50, 50, 50 yeah. would actually be great, mm, nice. you know, uh, for the whole race, but it warmed up. There was also a record for the wheelchair division for the men, too, so a world wow. new world record. Fantastic. Yeah, all right, you guys. That's fantastic. Well, we'll keep it going here. Lots to run on out of here. I know, you guys, <laughs> go get your training started we'll for next year. We'll take the <laughs> And uh, we'll keep it going here on America's Morning Headquarters, getting you all through the mid-morning hours. Indeed, indeed. We are starting things off here on this Monday. Hopefully it was a good weekend for you. Getting things started off very, very busy. I mean, we've got all sorts of issues in the West. Big snows, mm -hmm. and we're talking big, big snows, which is certainly welcome news out there. And of course, we're not done with the tropics. We are not. We have subtropical storm, Nicole, and that will be one of our headlining stories today. In fact, the headlining story. So we'll get to all of it. I mean, the forecast, and there's also rain and chilly temperatures, too, along with that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah we got it all. Of course, we are going to cover it. Well, here's today's big deal. The weather today, Florida coast. And let's start in Miami, where we're going to have a nice couple of weather days first. Actually, kind of warm and hot. But then we start to get into some of the impacts. And that's what I want to transition into, where we see the rain pick up. We see the wind. We see the, the cold coastal concerns and a lot of it coming around the time of high tide too and that will be a factor even before this kind of rain gets here. Let's dive right into it and talk about that rainfall concern. This is the forecast as we look ahead to the rain coming in over the next week. So this entire week here at least an inch probably one to two or even three a little farther to the north. This is subject to change and you know if you watch the tropics that things do change when it comes to the track and exactly who gets some of the biggest impacts. So stay tuned and be open to changes in the forecast. Cast. But what we're going to be watching as we see the circulation now, it's it's still 500 miles away from the northwestern Bahamas, even farther here from South Florida. But we're going to see that onshore flow for days, and that's going to be a part of the story, what's going to be happening along the coast and the coastal erosion we think that's going to happen. The moisture expands out pretty far from that center of circulation because it is a big system. That's a calling card of subtropical storms. They're usually pretty spread out. So we see the rain come in Tuesday night into Wednesday. Wednesday is going to be a tough weather day with wind and rain here all across, really at least central and south Florida, maybe up towards northern Florida as well. You see that rain extending. And some of the worst of the weather will be closer to the center of circulation. If it becomes tropical, though, you'll see that core really tighten up. If it remains subtropical, you'll see it really spread out when it comes to the wind field as well as the rain. There's also going to be that risk of a few isolated tornadoes. Whenever you have a landfalling tropical system, you have that risk in that right front quadrant. So heads up for that as we look ahead into your Wednesday time frame right now. That's the timing we're looking at. But again, be ready for changes because it's, it's still far away. We do have on the order of three to five inches of rain in spots here. This is based on the year European model. Then you look at the GFS, it has even more. The tough thing is that this falls right over into some of the basins that just dealt with heavy rain from Hurricane Ian. So we'll be watching all of that closely following the gauges for you here with the river flooding concerns. All right, let's look at the wind side of this, Alex. Yeah, let's do the atmospheric river that came in over the weekend to Washington and Oregon, big travel issues. Now that's come down the coast and now we're looking at the Sierra and a straight 80. We will have some issues there for travel crossing over the mountains over the next several, at least two or three maybe two days, maybe three days. But winter storm warnings are up for that area. We've got winter storm watches up for the Wasatch, winter storm warnings up here into parts of the Rockies, Montana, down into Wyoming, including around Jackson Hole. So here's what's happening. The main system here continues to dive south. Now we're in the trough. Now we're in that colder air. You see this kind of speckly look to the satellite out here over the northwest? Well, that's the cold air that we have, and that's going to keep us showery, some rain showers so far in Seattle. Your temperature in the mid to upper 30s, it's cold, but it hasn't been producing any snowfall yet, but you can see how we've got this big trough dipping in and this now is our atmospheric river diving south coming into parts of Southern California. So yeah, we've got some tough rainy, coolish weather coming our way. This will be on the move, although it's a slow move as it moves inland here over the next couple of days. The moisture comes in. We've had some rain around the Bay Area. That sinks south as we get into today and tomorrow getting rain into LA and San Diego. We've got some mountain snow there as well because it is a deep trough and the cold air is coming.
coming in. We see that diving in here starting later this afternoon. Watch how you know, everything just kind of pivots in to central and southern California. So across the Central Valley, we'll be getting much needed rainfall, but it'll be a chilly rain out there coming all the way down to LA, Palm Springs. You've got rain coming your way. Then over into Wednesday, we've got the Wasatch, you know, Salt Lake City. Could we get a little snow out of this? It's, it's possible. I mean, this is a deep trough, so we do have the cold air coming on in. Snowfall amounts here where we do have that atmospheric river pointed right at the Sierra. Look at the totals adding up. We are talking about more than three to four to even five feet at some of the highest peaks. And Alex, we're talking about one to two inches of rainfall, which could cause some concerns for flooding. Absolutely could. And you know, that same system, 7,000 people live in Idabel, where the damage from this round of severe weather is extensive. People are just now being able to put what they went through into words. National correspondent Justin Michaels shows us why that is harder for some than others taking the wood from the tree from the backyard that was knocked down about 200 and making that into a table. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. You know? yeah. Not, not that you want to remember a tornado, but you want to remember the living, you know. Yes. Yeah. And I guess my, it, it just never ceases to just amaze just how fast it happens and the, the destruction that occurs. So this was all happening here for us uh, going back to the 4th of November and we were forecasting a big uh, chance for the thunderstorms to get going and they certainly did. A number of reports here for us or parts of Oklahoma, Texas dealing with some of these big storms as well. Uh, yeah, it was just really, really a tough day when it came to severe weather. The, the forecast from the Storm Prediction Center was spot on. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was the area they highlighted. This is where we had a total so far now of 12 tornadoes or 20 reports. So we'll see what ends up getting very but we had an EF3 and then we had five EF2s and that was part of the forecast is that they had expected that we would have some strong tornadoes yeah. EF2 or higher. Yeah and then moving northbound here across the rest of the Midwest we also had some strong storms to deal with here blasting across the Midwest a number of reports showing up there across Illinois eventually across the Great Lakes Indiana Ohio as well so widespread when it came to having to deal with some of these big thunderstorms. Then we had the big gales over the lakes here the waves were up the wind was up I and mean, look at some of these winds in Roselle, Illinois with 80 mile per hour winds, Kenosha, Wisconsin, 60 mile per hour winds, even Chicago, we gusted to 58 miles per hour. Ooh, much more settled, at least for now. Yeah. Underneath the cold air and there's still some showery weather, whether it's snow or rain, it's, you know, it's cold. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it really Draw. is. So we go from that scene of the wintry weather to uh, dealing with, well, how about the tropics, which are still in full gear? Yes, you know, we've been talking last week about this potential area for development. Now something has developed, it's subtropical, which means in general, more people actually are gonna to feel impacts, I feel like. Right, uh, you generally have the impacts being spread a little bit farther yeah. out from that center. So yeah. yeah, absolutely, this is gonna be one to watch here. A lot of the Southeast coast uh, into Florida dealing with this thing here over the coming days. And we do mean over the coming days, this is not an in and out situation. Right. It's right. gonna be prolonged. It's a couple hundred miles away right now. So I wanna take you into what we're dealing with as I show you what we are watching here in the forecast for subtropical storm, Nicole. Now we right now have winds of 45 miles per hour. You look at what we're dealing with on the satellite picture and it's like, wait, what? There is a center of circulation and the hurricane hunters are in, they, they've been in and they'll continue to be in here investigating this. But you can see the general broad circulation that we have with it. There's some dry air that's been a part of this and that'll help stem any rapid intensification or anything like that. But the movement at the moment is to the north, northwest. We think it might change into a little more northwest or even westerly movement as we get into the next 24 to 48 hours. All right, so hurricane hunters are out, mentioned that. They are going to continue to figure out where exactly that center of circulation is as well as gives updates on the winds that we find in this area. The visible satellite really lets us see a little bit more about that circulation than the infrared does. You can see right in here, I mean, there's the spin and there is some convection or thunderstorm activity, shower activity right over top of it. And so that's going to allow it to continue to at least maintain strength. Now, as we get into the next 24, 36 hours, we do think it could gain strength. Look at the forecast, 45 mile per hour winds now increasing 50 to 60 by the time we get to Tuesday or early Wednesday. Could it become a hurricane before it approaches landfall? Yes, it could. You know, in the short term, we'll be watching 
to see, does it take on more tropical characteristics as opposed to subtropical once it gets closer to the Bahamas where the water temperatures are really warm and we've got some warmer deep water as well with that. As it approaches the coast, I think it may not matter that whether it's tropical or subtropical. What's going to matter is just how big it is right now and will continue to be and how the effects go far away from the center of circulation. So this cone is for the center of circulation. It very, very well may go like this, come back in, go back out. I mean, that's a potential track for it. So we've got a lot of folks that are going to be impacted by this with a big wind field, the rain as well. And Alex, one of the biggest concerns is going to be the coastal erosion that happens here because of this. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt about it. That is a big on ramp. But should the change in season have you rethinking an exit off the EV highway? Well, Jason Siegel, a research scientist in the mechanical. Taking advantage of some of the features like battery preconditioning uh, and, and even things like electric heated seats really can help you extend the range of your vehicle in, in the winter. So it sounds like the cold has much more of an impact than maybe a lot of people think. Is it on the battery itself or your use of different features of the car when the temperatures drop? Yeah, no, that's that's a great question. It's definitely both. So the, the battery... Towards, I, I would say, the future. Uh, is there new uh, research uh, being done to help improve battery performance when it gets cold uh, in the wintertime? Yeah, so... so some Does your outside affect how quickly you can charge the vehicle? Yes, it, it definitely does. Uh, Interesting and fascinating. I had not considered it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know we're focusing a lot on the winter, and you get to kind of briefly mention this, but when it comes to it also getting hot outside, the weather getting hot, do we still deal with the same sort of impacts? Yeah, so, so it's... Well, lots to think about, yes. no doubt about it. Uh, thanks so much, Jason Siegel, research scientist there in the mechanical engineering department at the University of Michigan. That was really interesting. You know, I, you have to assume that temperature would have impact on batteries. We see it in our phone all right, the time. Right, exactly. Yeah. There are ways to... ...that this is coming, so we want to make sure you know that subtropical storm Nicole has developed. It is on the move. It's heading towards Florida. And, and there it is. Uh, here's the look at the uh, Atlantic Ocean. There are the Bahamas, and you can see where it is in relation to that. There's the center right there, and you look at it, it's like, man, this does not look very well organized, and it's not right now, but it is expected to steadily uh, get its act together in the coming days. Right now, moving to the northwest, uh, close to 10 miles per hour. More of a westerly jog is expected to take place here as we head through the next 24 hours. It's moving at nine miles per hour and it's expected to slow down also, mm. um, which, as you know, when you have a slower moving tropical system, just more time for the water to build up, the rainfall to also be a concern. So these are all things that we'll be talking about as it approaches the coast Wednesday into Thursday. Alerts are up. Hurricane watches in that orange and the yellow. That's the tropical storm watches that extend all the way into uh, uh, southeast Georgia here for you. So tropical storm watches essentially mean tropical storm conditions are possible in the next 48 hours. Hurricane watches, hurricane conditions possible in the next two days. So there's a lot of different satellite features we can look at. This is the water vapor, which allows us to see where is the dry air. There's a lot of dry air just off to its west in the direction that it's moving. And some of that is getting up into the circulation. But if anything, the trend over the last several hours is maybe less getting in, right? Kind of the convection overtaking things. Right, so with that being around, it's not going to blow up very quickly. That's going to keep that rapid intensification at bay, but still a steady strengthening is anticipated in the coming days as it gets steered to the west. Big area of high pressure, the same one that's going to bring a lot of warmth to the eastern half of the country. Well, around that, it's going to get steered westbound. It's interesting how it's all connected. The fact that it's, you know, in the 80s in Virginia is a factor right. in steering this here to the west and towards Florida. That forecast cone does show us two things. One, the projected path, but also the increase in intensity expected to get up to hurricane force by Wednesday evening as it approaches the coast. And then eventually moves across Florida and a forecast right now take it into the Gulf of Mexico, at least that northeast part of the Gulf of Mexico before turning north and eastbound here for that early part of the weekend. I mean, you you look at some of the modeling and it like just comes around and exact position it takes doesn't matter. It just kind of stops and then turns yeah. and makes a hard turn around here. And that's because of the steering flow to the north. So the big ridge gives way to a trough that comes in and pulls it up in that direction. All right. So once you get to what we know right now and what we are anticipating, this thing should become a very large storm system. So watch the impacts being felt again, well away from that center of the circulation. It could be at hurricane force strength when it does get closer to Florida. So the wind will, will certainly be a factor in terms of the intensity of wind, but because it's so large, we know the effects are going to be far reaching from the center, regardless of the winds at the core. And of course, some of those impacts include coastal flooding, watch for strong winds, heavy rain, uh, rips, rip currents, as well as beach erosion. That's going to be an issue too.
Now, storm surge, yeah, that's the deadliest part of a tropical system. Hurricane expert Dr. Rick Nabb shows us why. And storm surge watches are up right now along the eastern coast, extends from Hollywood all the way up actually to coastal Georgia. Yeah, indeed. So these are the areas where storm surge could certainly be an issue here for us. I think I said the latest, uh, maybe the highest in the range of four to six feet in a few mm -hmm. spots uh, yeah. that we could see. So again, it is definitely uh, one of the things that we're going to be uh, watching and facing in the coming days with this system moving westbound. It, a, a tough factor that goes with it is the fact that we are at full moon on Tuesday, mm -hmm. and so we've had high tide issues already before rain even gets here. So you bring in rain, you bring in onshore wind, you bring in the surge, and there's certainly around the high tide going to be larger than normal impacts. And the rainfall, too. Three to five inches here. That's the forecast, and that goes through Friday here for us. So even, again, far inland, Orlando, one of those spots, uh, the coast as well, there certainly could be some flash flooding. That mm. is a possibility. I think the fact that we're going to have that heavy rainfall and the onshore flow, so yeah. any rivers that drain out yeah. on the east coast won't be able to because the water will keep getting pushed inland. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's going to be tough when it comes to flooding. It really is. So there you can see where it is in relation to the uh, coast of Florida. Again, still a ways away, and we've got some time to track it as it marches its way slowly off towards the west in the coming days. This year's COP27 climate summit has kicked off in Egypt, bringing together tens of thousands of participants and more than 100 heads of state to discuss efforts to cut greenhouse gas emissions and deal with our changing climate. Now, one of the items uh, up for discussion, the Glasgow Pact, our Felicia Combs explains. So I want to kind of give you the latest on what's going on with this uh, subtropical system, subtropical storm. There's the visible satellite, and you can kind of pick out, there it is. Mm -hmm. There's the center of the circulation uh, right there. Yeah, really you can see that on the visible satellite picture. Um, you know, one thing that we are noticing when it comes to a subtropical storm is the circulation itself might not be the most impressive part. It's the fact that it's really big and spread out. And it is formed differently than a true tropical system. It's fueled by temperature contrast in addition to the warm warmer sea surface temperatures, and they're usually pretty lopsided. Yeah, exactly. They don't look the best when it comes to the presentation here. But again, the weather that is being felt by these things can be well away from the center, and that is exactly what we are anticipating with this thing. So when we look at a tropical system, you get the energy being derived essentially from those warm ocean waters here. That's a tropical system, a little bit different than a subtropical system where it does get some of its energy from the waters, the warm waters, but also from the temperature contrast and differences in the environment. Yes. So either way, you're going to have impacts. Um, and so we want to take you through some of those impacts. First, just giving you an update on where we are. We still have 5% remaining of the season. We're not done yet. Tropical season runs through November 30th. And you can get things developing beyond that, too. When we break it down, October and November, going back to 1851, you can see October, you get about 20% of the named storms in that month, where it's 5% in November. So that number certainly does come down quite a bit. But it's still a number, mm -hmm. still a value. It can happen. Yeah, if you're playing the odds, you'd be like, nah, I'm going to I'm going Right. be good in November, but right. it, it, there's still that chance, which is what we are dealing with. November, you often look down here to the Caribbean, which is where we saw Lisa just come through. But you look back in history, there have been a few up in the zone where we have some tropical storm. Nicole, right now. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're uh, you know, add another November to the list here of uh, dealing with a tropical cyclone. This is going back to uh, across the entire record of the November major hurricane. So category three or higher, nine of them total. And you can see the general area, a lot of them kind of clustered here in the mm -hmm. western parts of the Caribbean. Yeah, definitely remember Ada from a few years ago, from 2020. That just brought tremendous uh, wind, really rainfall here into Central America. Um, go up into Michelle, 2001, 140 mile per hour winds, and ultimately made landfall there in that Big Bend area of Florida. Yeah, way back in history, 1932, 175 mile per hour wow. system there that uh, had an impact on yeah. Cuba. So, whew. These things can get powerful. Now, Nicole not expected to get to that uh, mark, but still a system that will have impacts, and we will certainly be detailing that. Of course, there's the list. Nicole, next up, hopefully we won't have to deal with it, but next up would be the old name, and that would be Owen. There is an area to watch out there still. Yeah. Well, the Weather Channel in Espanol, it is tracking Nicole for here as well. All right, so let's get going, talking more about what's happening with our subtropical storm, Nicole. Now, it's a subtropical storm, which mm -hmm. you might be wondering, well, what's different between that and a regular tropical storm? Right, yeah, well, you can almost think of it as a sort of hybrid here. It kind of has features of both a tropical system and a non-tropical system kind of all mold melded into one here for us. Uh, right now, again, not the most organized system, but it will slowly and steadily do that. Right now, we got some pretty dry air on sort of the east side of the circulation that is working its way through and also on the west side of the circulation 
circulation there. So that's one thing that will help to keep it at bay, at least in the near term. Yeah, it doesn't have the classic look like a tropical mm -hmm. system would have, but it is it's fueled by mainly temperature contrast, a little lopsided. Um, you know, there is some warm water down there, but it's not the sole thing providing the, the fuel for the system to develop. The weather can be quite far reaching from yes. the center of circulation, which is why we keep urging you to make sure you know that the impacts will be far away from the center. Yeah, absolutely indeed. So we'll be watching it and again, right there in the Atlantic will push its way towards the west as we compare again a tropical system versus a subtropical system. A tropical low really derives all its energy from the warm and moist air there in the waters of the, at least in this case in the Atlantic. That's where it gets its energy while a subtropical low gets some of its energy from the water, but also the temperature contrast that's in the environment. All right, so where are we in the hurricane season? We still have 5% left to go. It runs through November 30th, so we do get development this time of year. It's not the, you know, the busiest time. And often, if you are to get something this late in the season, it is subtropical. Right, exactly, yeah. indeed. And you can see how it breaks down between October and November. October here, when it comes to name storms, about 20%. And then when you get to November, that number really drops off. Name storms, 5%. 5% being about uh, becoming hurricanes there. So it, it's it's not unheard of, uh, but it's also something that is not ha that doesn't happen all the time. Yeah, last week we were talking about Lisa down here. You know, this, th that's the zone that you might typically watch for into the Central Caribbean for something to develop, but it does happen. These are the points of origins in the month of November going back in history. And we've had a few up to near where we have Nicole right now. And you can see here, looking at the entire record book of a November major hurricanes, nine total. And you can see a good number of them here in the Caribbean, but also working their way across uh, just along the southeast coast of the Florida. So close to home here for us. That's generally where you're going to find it happening here in the month of November. Yeah, just remember, I remember Ada in 2020. Oh boy, that one came in and just caused so much flooding there in mm -hmm. Central America. Also going back to 2001, we had Michelle, 140 miles per hour. So it can happen. We don't think Nicole will get that strong. Yeah. Well, the Weather Channel in Espanol is tracking. Nick, literally don't pay for yeah. anything except for tires, if I need to change that out. Oh, and wash your fluid, too. Yeah. Wash your fluid, yes. <laughs> well, let's see. Bill said this on that. Like, how much does the cold impact? Right, and it, it just differs, you know, depending yeah. on how the state of the battery at the time yeah. that you're trying to, to try to move yeah. about. Yeah, that makes yeah. it quite a it bit was, of a difference. It was really interesting. We'll keep your responses coming. We'll share them on the show. There's a lot to talk about today. And, of course, the headlining story is subtropical storm. Nicole will have an update on the track and expected impacts straight ahead. <laughs> There's inflation on the <laughs> volcano in Hawaii. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks you, thank you for choosing America's Morning Headquarters to get you through the mid-morning hours. We are here on the Weather Channel helping you plan out for this week. And uh, lots to kind of plan around this week across the nation mm -hmm. from the West Coast to the middle of the country, the East Coast, tropics. I mean, it's just yeah. full chalk of uh, things to deal with. Subtropical storm, Nicole taking the headlines today and breaking news right now. There's a hurricane watch that has been posted for parts of Florida as uh, we watch for that new advisory coming in. So want to take you to our snapshot of our top stories today. You got to think that's why it is like you also you always have to pay attention to what's happening there because yeah. it's going to have an impact on here. Exactly. Well, today's big deal. The weather today could be giving you whiplash from.